and welcome to the next session of uh, some of the installments that we're talking about when we're really getting into some of the deeper elements of our data scientists um, uh, initiatives within uh, the energy and sustainability services area of Schneider Electric. So I'm Jessica and uh, Jeff, really good to see you again. I'm excited about the next session that we're going to have. Good to see you too. It's always a good day when I get to talk about data science. <laughs> well, it's probably every day, right? <laughs> True. So, um, so as we kind of kick off the, uh, the discussion, in the last few years, there have been a lot of topics and a lot of uh, buzzwords, I'll call them, um, that's really uh, focused in this area, whether it's data science, whether it's artificial intelligence, whether it's machine learning. Can we kind of start off demystifying some of those terms and helping us kind of understand what they are and what their differences are? Yeah, that's a great question. Uh, a lot of people have been using these terms uh, interchangeably, but there are some, some distinct differences. Uh, data science is really the practice of using data to understand uh, processes and observe phenomena to enable better decision making. Um, it's really just about extracting information from data. Uh, machine learning is a, a little bit of a step beyond that. Um, sometimes I'll refer to it as ML, um, but it's the study and implementation of algorithms which can learn from data. So these algorithms take uh, examples of data and they learn to generalize them to different situations or work to uncover specific patterns in the data. Um, artificial intelligence or AI is the field of making machines uh, quote unquote intelligent, uh, capable of performing tasks that are generally associated with human intelligence. Uh, machine learning is a subfield of AI and, and sometimes those terms are used interchangeably. Um, but our team primar primarily focuses on data science and ML. Okay, so if I were to summarize that, you all are, are really responsible for taking the data that we have, whether internally or on our client's behalf, and really making it more actionable and adding that deeper layer of intelligence so we can do even more with it and get even more value out of it. Yeah, um, but it's, it's more than that too. Uh, we're also working to improve our internal processes and the services we offer to clients. Um, any efficient, efficiency improvements we can make just means more face time with the client uh, so we can focus on their needs. So I'm sure in the time that you've been with Schneider, there are several examples of this that we can kind of uh, help bring that topic to life. Are there, is there one that you can kind of highlight to take us a little deeper in that journey? Yeah, let's talk about the uh, advanced variance testing service we've been working on for the last year. Um, this was implemented in early to mid-2020, uh, and um, basically one of the services we offer to our clients is the collection, aggregation, and visualization of their energy consumption data. So each month we collect nearly a million invoices from across the world uh, from our client sites, and as those invoices enter our system, uh, they need to be checked to ensure accuracy. So we want to make sure that our clients are being accurately billed, um, make sure they're being charged accurately, and we want to make sure that they can correctly uh, report their, their progress towards meeting their sustainability goals. Mm -hmm. uh, in the past, we had a rule-based system which checked the data for validity. Uh, so as a simple example, we might have compared uh, their energy usage this month to their energy usage last month. Um, or we might have said, how does their energy usage in January 2021 compare to the energy usage in January, January 2020? Um, these make sense in general, but there are some times when that's not a great idea. Um, we caught a lot of errors, but we also created a lot of false positives and a lot of extra work for our internal teams that have to chase down these issues. Um, in reality, many of our customers should expect to see uh, large deviations in, in usage and cost from one month to the next, especially if their business is highly seasonal. So using machine learning, uh, we generated some new algorithms, uh, some new models, which are unique to each and every client. Uh, these models look at the past behavior of an account and try to predict um, you know, cost and usage based on things like weather and seasonality. Um, we can also estimate a level of uncertainty that we need to associate with each account and factor that in when we decide what we need to investigate and what is just a, a normal fluctuation for a given account. Uh, and then when a data point exceeds this valid range of acceptable values, we hand it over to our invoice uh, analysis and validation team. Hopefully this project has created a lot less work on their behalf 
um, and given our clients um, something that's more valuable in terms of a service. Well, and you, you mentioned earlier about uh, how that's not always the same as far as the uh, the need to take current usage and compare it to the same season last year or, you know, kind of compare that over time. It feels like, you know, when in, in during the pandemic, as an example, is a, is a perfect way where some of our clients have definitely seen uh, a very different load profile and a very different shape and very different costs um, just based on the, the changing businesses. How have you guys kind of continued to adapt in, in that regard um, around the variance test especially? Yeah, so that was an interesting time for the data science team. Uh, we implemented a new service right around the same time the pandemic hit and everyone expected that the number of variances we'd be seeing would, would drop. Um, both good news and bad news, our new service worked and it identified the, the anomalies. And uh, it turned out that there were a lot of anomalies in 2020. Um, so we had to reconfigure some of these tests, take that into account. And, and the pandemic hit different sectors differently. Uh, in the hospitality sector, people were using a lot less energy. In some of the industrial areas, uh, they were using a lot more. Um, so there's a lot of information that goes into building these models and determining what type of, of usage is, is acceptable or expected for each client. So it was a fun uh, and um, challenging process uh, for 2020. Well, so in the end, you know, we're really trying to focus, you know, the work on the most productive and impactful work as far as the anomalies versus all, you know, kind of get rid of all the clutter and the noise. So that had to be, you know, really well received, um, probably by both our clients and our, our internal teams. Yeah, it's been a hit, big hit. Um, it's, it's really helping us uh, with our internal goal of establishing a culture of innovation, which we discussed a lot in episode one. Um, as more and more teams saw what we were able to do with this project, it, it spawned new ideas for services and, and process improvements. So overall, people have been very happy with it. That's great. And it's so much to get kind of a win under your belt to be able to kind of, as you said, kind of ignite those other things in the, in the culture of a business. So um, maybe, you know, now that we've gotten some of these other projects under our belt, what's, can you tell us a little bit more about where the team plans on focusing and the, the horizon of your, uh, of your pre future projects? Yeah, so we've got a huge backlog, but we're, we're working diligently to uh, try to whittle it down. Um, this year, we're probably going to be spending a lot of time working on forecasting, forecasting things like demand across ISOs or, um, focusing some of the costs that are associated with our, our clients' energy needs. Um, we're also doing a lot of really cutting edge work in the area of reinforcement learning and natural language processing. So stay tuned for some more on that, uh, hopefully later this year, and we'll have some, some more exciting wins to announce. So as um, someone granted with a background in math, but not nearly a specialty in anything related to, to data science, what What's your advice for those of us that um, that want to help be a part of this journey or help accelerate the, the transformation that different businesses are seeing um, to be able to use and leverage these new technologies alongside their data science team? What can what can we do to help? Yeah, um, another great question. And some of this we talked about with Dominic in episode one, um, but data is a really valuable asset. So if, if you're in charge of data collection one way or another, understand that it's it's an important aspect of your job. Um, being a good data steward, making sure we collect the data, making sure we enter it accurately, and making sure that when we ask clients for, for information, they understand that there's a purpose to doing it. Um, educate yourself. There's lots of fun videos online, um, interesting articles about what's next in machine learning and AI, and, and come talk to me. I'm always happy to answer questions, and so is the rest of the data science team. Um, and then when you see something in your day-to-day -day life uh, that can be improved, reach out. Um, we love to have new project ideas and are, are constantly looking for new ways to improve the business. Well, those are all uh, very tangible things that um, that I know are we're all empowered to do, so that's, that's really helpful. And thank you for continuing to kind of uh, 
uh, be a voice of this culture change that we're continuing to do as we continue to champion and be you know larger di digital citizens across our organization both you know internally and on behalf of our customers so i really appreciated the time jeff this is really uh, this is really informative and i always good to catch up with you yep jessica always great to chat thanks for having me thank you